Nothing much has happened in terms of comprehensive immigration reform. There was a Senate bill. It did not uh, move forward from the time it was uh, passed by the Senate. Um, in the last few months, what has happened is there's been an influx of unaccompanied minors that have reached our southern borders. Um, these children are primarily from Central America, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador. Um, they have made a harrowing journey um, in order to escape mainly gang violence and just instability in their own countries um, and have now reached our borders, we have no way of, of knowing what to do with them. So basically they're stuck there. We are stuck uh, in a position at least the administration in terms of what to do with them. It's been going on for quite a long period of time. By the time we started getting news reports of it, there were 50 to 60,000 of these children and, and it's a combination of two things that went on first a 2008 piece of legislation that granted different status to uh, uh, refugees from some of the Central American countries and then what we talked about on this show with the President of the United States saying I'm not going to enforce a law that I don't like and that kind of gave, gave a green light to children and parents started putting their children on whatever means of transportation they could get them to the United States because they thought well once they get here they're going to be allowed to stay and then the parents will be allowed to join them so it, Governor Perry has known about this for quite a period of time but suddenly uh, something brought it to the forefront and it, and it did become a full-fledged crisis and that's kind of what fanned uh, immigration from a political standpoint in the last several weeks. Um, I would agree that it's been going on more than just the recent news you know, headlines. Um, I would disagree respectfully with Brian about the causes. Um, the 2008 law that he refers to is the Trafficking Victims Reauthorization Act or Trafficking Victim Protection Reauthorization Act, which was signed into law by George W. Bush and had bipartisan support from both sides of the aisle. And all that did was say um, children from certain countries, um, excluding Mexico, excluding Canada, um, they, they couldn't be expeditiously removed. Um, DHS had to, within 72 hours, transfer the case to the Office of Refugee Resettlement. So uh, why are people using the word refugee to refer to the children? Um, I think probably it has to do with where you're coming from. Um, I think we don't know how many of the children would qualify as refugees, but that's what we want to find out. We want for these children to be able to go through a process where they can be evaluated to see if they would qualify for asylum, which would be the same as refugee status, whether they could qualify for humanitarian parole. And all of this is perfectly lawful. I think it's important not to characterize these children as undoc or illegal immigrants, to use language other people use, because they've done nothing unlawful. They're presenting themselves to law enforcement. They've shown up at a point of entry and said, we are seeking the protection of your laws. And that's what the system is supposed to do. I think the system faces a problem because of the massive number. I mean, the system can't support processing, you know, this huge increase all at once, mm -hmm. uh, which is why the administration asked for additional funding. But I think we do have to be careful with the language we use because mm -hmm. these are children who are not accompanied by their parents. Well, and I think Becca makes a, the, the point for me that this was triggered mostly by the Obama administration and President Obama come out and saying, we're just not going to enforce our immigration laws. If you're a child here in the country, you're going to get to stay. Well, and it, whether or not uh, he meant for that, that triggered this green light. And even the Honduran president uh, was at the White House and, and scolding the president for not being more forceful and saying this is not what uh, we meant to have happen. And the other thing that Becca made the point about, we want to get these children processed. The problem that I've found out just recently in this massive government bureaucracy that is very in, inefficient, uh, the Border Patrol has recorded 57,000 children. Uh, the, the court system has about 20,000 in the system. So we've lost 37,000 children somewhere in the system and so that's another problem that's being created um, by this situation. Border influx in large part started in 2011. There was a series of Justice Department memos called the Morton Memos in which the federal uh, Obama administration relaxed the standards for prosecution of illegal immigrants and in fact the statistics show that that contributed primarily to the start of the border surge it was exacerbated, as Brian said, by the Obama administration's action in 2012, the DACA executive order, which basically gave 
a somewhat of an administrative amnesty to childhood ar arrivals, uh, children who were brought here primarily by their parents, all of whom were Ill illegal immigrants. And uh, it's interesting that, that Miss O'Neill is so uh, adamant that the, um, the, the recent arrivals be treated in accordance with the law. At our organization, we, we very much would like everyone to be treated in accordance with the law, and, and we would encourage the Obama administration to start enforcing the law. I think Brian is exactly right that the Obama administration's lawlessness in terms of relaxing prosecution of illegal immigration, in, uh, authorizing DACA, has basically contributed to the incentive for all of these people to come here from other countries in violation of American law and to the detriment of American citizens. And if the Obama administration would start enforcing the existing immigration laws, this would stop. Morton memos and the prosecutorial discretion. Yeah, what, who, who is Morton and why are we referring to well, the Morton memos? Mr. Rose Their service center, I mean, they're USCIS um, directors, I think. Well, was ICE. The, ICE. Yeah. It was an ICE memo. Oh, all right. Um, because they're the ones who are enforcing. So uh -huh. Immigration and Customs Enforcement um, basically created a tiered system. They didn't relax prosecutions uh, for undocumented individuals who were already in process or who would be eligible to be removed. What it did was target people with criminal backgrounds, people with family ties, people who had no criminal background. It, it created a tiered system so that basically ICE agents could look at a person and prioritize and use their resources more effectively. That's what the Morton memo said. We don't have enough resources to just willy-nilly go around rounding up people that we find that are undocumented on the streets. We need to target our resources and use them efficiently. Nothing was relaxed in terms of removal or enforcement. It just created a tiered system so that agents were able to identify and based on the prosecutorial discretion would expedite removal of certain of these individuals. Second, I think people are confusing a lot of different language, different acts that have been introduced. DACA, it refers against to deferred action. Um, it was part, it's a response to um, our Congress not passing the DREAM Act, which has been introduced and introduced and introduced year after year. Um, the reason it has nothing to do with these minors, regardless of what coyotes are telling them down in Central America, which, by the way, our administration has no control over, is the fact that DACA is for individuals who have GEDs or diplomas who are seeking some sort of status here so they can work. The people, the children that are coming here that we're talking about in the re recent months are not coming here looking for jobs or to steal jobs or to somehow just gain citizenship or amnesty. They're coming here because if they have to go back, they will literally be killed or inducted into gangs. That's why. They're not coming uh -huh. here for jobs. DACA is not a humanitarian. It's, it's specifically to give children who are brought here as minors a way to stay and work and study in the U.S. It has nothing to do with either the Morton memos. It has nothing to do with the traffic, the Trafficking Victims Protection Act. These are just sort of laws that are being conflated and confusing the public. I mean, I think, I think that that's just absolutely incorrect because why did it all of a sudden happen? Why are we getting the crisis now? Why is this influx coming now? And it's because of those actions by the Obama administration. And the, the, the issue with the children uh, has got everybody concerned because they do need to be treated humanely. Um, there's some confusion from the Obama administration whether or not they're going to be sent back to their countries. I think ultimately that would be uh, the best option uh, for them as long as we can get them to security in their, in their own countries. But the problem is, is that our border agents have become babysitters. They are spending all their time changing diapers, uh, taking care of, of these children. And I use the term children loosely because a lot of them are gang members. They're, they're not being inducted into gangs if they go back. They're already parts of violent extremist gangs. But all of our attention from on our border is being focused on that, and that's leaving just a porous... Uh, opportunity for all kinds of bad things to be happening on our border. We don't have border agents down there. I saw a video of one of our sheriffs down on the Texas border saying there are no border agents around. A uh, uh, fellow filmed himself just coming across the Rio Grande just, and he put on a Bin Laden costume and came across just to demonstrate how dangerous and, and what this is doing and the problems that's been caused by Rebecca this Neal, administration. Why did it just begin? Um, why did it start? Uh, what triggered the children 
coming across the border. Okay, yeah, you can't look at these, this event in a vacuum. It's not all about, or really at all about, U.S. policy with respect to DACA. Okay, there has, Honduras is basically a failed state. Okay, that's widely documented and accepted that these children are facing extreme violence. We're talking about forced conscription into gangs, rape, murder, and they cannot seek the protection of their own government. So in the tradition and history of refugees all over the world, they're seeking protections from other governments. And not just the United States, by the way. Panama, Nicaragua, and Belize have experienced a 700% increase in asylum applications and probably not because those kids think they're getting DACA in Nicaragua because they're not.